Greetings. Welcome to the Kingdom Cultural Center. Today we're going to talk about citizenship. By the way, that's a very important subject to talk about. I want you to turn to uh, Philippians, the third chapter. And the 17th to the 20th verse. I'm going to read. Join with others in following my example. Brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. This is Paul speaking, by the way. I want you to understand that. For as I have often told you before, and now say again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. And their glory is in their shame. Their minds is on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to express something to you. Paul was given an example, and he gave example. He lived such a life that he could say that. And like perfection in, in a sport, I thrive for that. I, I thrive for perfection. I, I strive to be that example, one of many examples in the kingdom of God while I'm here on this earth that many can look at me and say, I want to be to the level that he is or better. Because the kingdom, as ambassadors, we are to be focused on his message. When Jesus was down here, I want you to understand something. He was the most perfect example, but they didn't get it. They didn't get it. He was kingdom walking on earth, healing the sick, raising the dead, blind eyes are open, deaf are hearing, the dumb speaking. That's what it is to be in the kingdom. That's what it's like. You don't have to sweat the small stuff. Trust in him. The problem is that we have failed. Our faith is so, so high, you know, and the Lord wants it this point. He wants to hide where we totally trust in him, believe in him. You know, there's, there's going to come times when the world, you know, don't live according to the standards of this world. Paul gave a good example. He said, hey, follow me. Be my, look at my example. Each of you who are listening to this should be saying, hey, Man, all year round, look at my example. You should be proud to say that according to his word. And the people should, and you should be able, see, if people look at your past, that's them. But don't let your past be your present. Are, are, are you feeling me here? Don't let your past be your present. See, the king forgave you. People want to look in your past. That's fine. But don't let that be your present, how you're conducting yourself now. Don't let that be. Walk according to you who are in the light, not to those that are in darkness and stumbling. Let his word radiate from your life. Let it radiate from your speech. Let it radiate from your conduct. You are a kingdom citizen. 
Paul said it. And that's a fact. The kingdom isn't a religion. It's a nation. So, having said that, you have to be a citizen in the nation. You have to go through the process. <laughs> you know, there's so much said about today about illegals. But you can't come that way in the kingdom. Because if you're an illegal, you get no benefits. Not in the kingdom. If you don't have his spirit, you're just another religious person going through the rituals of, of, of a religious organization. And you have membership. But in the kingdom, you're a citizen. And you have citizenship. So you can call on the Lord God at any do, at any point in time. Yes. Yes. Man, let me tell you something. When you are calling on the Lord and you're living the right life and you have the Holy Spirit in your life and the key thing is the governor, the Holy Spirit in your life. I get pain in my body. I got pain in my body now as I sit here. But it doesn't affect me from speaking. It doesn't affect me from writing. Because I know I'd rather have him in my life and him take care of me than be have to depend on anyone else. Your faith should outshine your fear by far. You should have no fear. And you have to get into that place in time where you don't. You may the more you stay in his word, I, I'm gonna I want you to get this. The more you stay in his word. The stronger you will get in your faith. The more you meditate on his word, the stronger you will get in your faith in him. And remember, I always say, faith has to have an object. So what object do you have your faith in? Mine is in Jesus. Mine is in Jesus. He's king of kings, and he's lord of lords. He's the beginning and the end. He's alpha and omega. You got to walk this walk. Not only talk it, but you got to live it. And when you get the Holy Spirit in your life, you don't fear anything. You don't fear. I mean, you... you you don't fear. You have to grow to know him, to please him, study his word. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. You want to know the mind of God? Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Stay in his word. I can't emphasize that enough. Stay in the Lord God's word. Don't get caught up with outside details of something else. If you're an ambassador, if you're claiming to be an ambassador, don't get caught up with the things in this world. Stay with his word and stand on it. Don't back down from nothing. The Lord God never changes. He sent his son, and he is to be the one that brings us together. But you got to believe in him. Ambassadors talk about Jesus. They talk about the kingdom. They talk about how to live. They talk about the faith in him. They talk about his constitution and how it applies. That's a kingdom citizen. A kingdom citizen can call on the king at any given time. King Jesus, that's the name. If you want to get to the father. Jesus, that's the name. If you want to get to the father, it's his son. He gave all power and all authority 
to the sun. Now, when are you going to get the clue to that? Remember, remember what I tell you. His word will be the last word. Heaven and earth, he says, will pass away. But my word by no means will pass away. So, in other words, if you embrace his word and your words in your life, you're going to live ever. Are you feeling me here? This world is governed by fear. We don't have a lack of need. If you got Jesus in your life, the Holy Spirit in your life, if you have him in your life, you don't have a lack of need. He will provide you. He will take care of you. He will never fail you. We are his citizens in the kingdom. So we can call on him at any given time. There's no illegals in the kingdom. All those who are in the kingdom has his spirit indwelling in their mortal body. And we're waiting from that day when he will come with his holy angels. He said, the dead in Christ first will rise. Then those who are left down here will be taken. So you have to have, I want you to be encouraged. Citizens, you know, you know, if you go into another country and you're a citizen of another country and, and, and something happened, your government's supposed to come to your aid. Supposed to come to your aid. My king comes to my aid. He has angels who take care of that and watch over me. Trust me. And my wife usually says that I keep them busy. <laughs> I don't know, maybe one day I'll ask them when I get there. I, I keep him busy, but I, I trust in him. I believe in him. He said he will never fail me under any circumstance. He'll never fail me. Trust the Lord with all your heart, Solomon said, and don't lean on your understanding. Don't lean on your own understanding. Because you don't know what it is. I don't. Religious people fail to understand that when you get the Holy Spirit in your life, you want to please him, not everything else. So be encouraged. I want you to see something. I'm going to say something here to you. Paul wrote this because he was living such a life that he could say, follow my example. Can you say that? Follow my example. I'm getting to the point. I can say that. Follow my example. And you're going to get challenges. See, we don't battle with the world. It's the prince of the world that's pissed off at us, the kingdom citizens. He doesn't want to kill you or wipe you out. He wants to discredit you, whereas you go someplace and you say, oh, and once he see, he, he, he's always accusing you of something. We're talking about the devil now, the evil one. You know, to, to, to in a race, I was watching the trials for the Olympics, Olympic trials. And some people was disqualified. They wasn't shot. They wasn't stabbed. They wasn't choked. But they didn't follow the rule. They jumped the gun. In some cases, you can jump it once, but not twice. So they were disqualified. See, the devil don't want to, he don't have to kill you. He just makes you ineffective. As an ambassador, don't become ineffective. As a citizen, don't become ineffective. Meaning, 
your life is is lived in such a way that you don't affect anyone in a positive way for the kingdom. Your life's supposed to be exemplary. You know, it's come to a time in my life where I, I enjoy driving, and my daughters in New York, they enjoy driving. And in fact, they'll be one of them be down here to see me in a few weeks. But they enjoy driving. I enjoy driving. But there's times when you must know yourself. The enemy attacking. Sometimes I have to put on certain music to keep me calm because the enemy is always attacking me. Always want me to get out of sync with the word. When I stick to that word, always trying to cause me to be abreast or, or rude. But I stick to the word. And I have to take it one day at a time. Because the enemy would love to destroy me, to destroy my reputation in him, to, to destroy, have people see or see he ain't all of that and all that. But no, you, you have to keep in mind, keep your mind on the word and all the thoughts that you have. You have to take them bad boy. Thank, let, me, let me read you something. I got to read you this. Let's see here. I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians. See, as kingdom citizens, as ambassadors, you have to be careful of how you think because your thinking can cause you, cause you to act. Listen, uh, 2 Corinthians 10 chapter, starting with the first verse going down through to the 6th verse. Follow me as I read. By meekness, by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you. I, Paul, who am timid when face to face with you, but bold when always, bold when away, I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be towards some people who think that we live by the standards of this world. That's one thing you got to keep in mind. Never live by the standard. I don't live by the standard of this world. I have to be an example. I have to be an example to my son. I have to be an example to my wife. My name represents something. I have to be an example to my daughters. I have to be an example to those around me. Yeah, some people are going to really get you, get your, get your, 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 your blood boiling. But you got to be cool. You got to chill out. And you can only do that through the word. Listen, he goes on. The weapons we fight are not the weapons of the world or on the, on the contrary, they have divine power to, to demolish Strongholds. Keep in mind, we have that. The weapon is the word of God. Listen. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Are you feeling me here? He says, take captive. Are you? Let me break it down what he's saying. Thoughts that come into your mind, rebuke them, take hold of them in the word of God. Don't spit it out your mouth. A lot of times people react to things and comes out the hole under their nose instead of responding. And responding to something takes time. React, spews come right out. You have to take that thought in your mind and say, oh, no, I'm not going to say that. Oh, oh, I'm not going to do that. Be 
because that will cause, you know, it doesn't take for you to build a, 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 a deck of cards. It only takes one little click and the whole house, the whole thing of deck come down. You have to know who you are in God and cherish that, value that. And when you do that, you'll be much more reluctant to say what you think and stay in that word. Take that thought and hold it and say, oh, 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 no, no, no. I ain't saying that. But a lot of times the devil may trick us. And see, if you don't believe in the devil, if you believe in God, you got to believe in the evil one, the devil, because that's where the devil came from. Oh, this is going to really get you. Yeah, the devil came from heaven. He was kicked out. His butt was kicked out because he got a radical idea that he can overthrow heaven. Boy, was that stupid. You know, I always say one thing. My wife and I was talking. She remembered me when I first met her. I said, ignorance is one thing. You can learn from ignorance. But stupid, you can't help it. You can't help a stupid. Somebody who's stupid, you can't help them. You can't, you know, nothing can help stupid. And talking about stupid, that was stupid. The devil thought he can overcome, he thought he can overcome his creator. We got to learn to stand on God's word. Yeah, I'm telling you, brother. You got to stand on his word. Don't quiver. Don't shake. Stand on his word. Speak his word. Keep absorbing that word. It'll give you courage. Sister, it'll give you courage. Both of you, it'll give you courage to speak his word and to walk upright and to stand. Even when things you're used to doing, you have to change. The word will change you. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, come to the climax of this session. But I want to tell you again, I'm going to keep saying it. Your faith in the kingdom, in the word of God, in Jesus, is your greatest asset in the kingdom. Until next time, brother, sister, you have a nice day.